Hello, my name is Neil Davidson and I'm the founder of Raw Arm Studios. Welcome to another online drawing session. This session mimics the structure of a regular life drawing class. We'll show you one or more photographs on the screen and it's your job to draw what you see. We'll have an artist joining us, doing a demonstration and giving hints and tips. You can either follow their advice or do your own thing. It is entirely up to you. Once the session is finished, don't forget to post your work onto Instagram and hashtag it with hashtag raw umber live. You can also download the reference photographs and watch this video again after the session is finished. So if the artist is going too fast for you, don't worry. You can watch the video now and then watch it again later on. Right, let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to this latest Rambo video. In this portrait drawing tutorial, I want to take you through a single one hour pose and I want to show you the difference between tones and lines. For this I'll be using white paper and I'll be using willow charcoal for the majority of the drawing with a compressed charcoal pencil for the details later on in the drawing. I also like to use some blending tools. This can be anything from a stump to a brush or a piece of tissue, depending on what you prefer to use. And as a final tool, I like to use a gray putty rubber. This is useful because it's very easily moldable and so it's really good for small details. But you may find it doesn't erase completely to the white of the paper. In that case, I also use a white rubber, so a normal rubber. As always, you can find my preferred materials in the materials box below the video. So let's get started with the drawing. The first thing I always do is measure some big proportions. And when I'm putting down a temporary line to indicate the back as well as the front of the shape of the head. Note that I'm holding the charcoal at the end and I'm using my whole arm to draw, so not just my wrist. Now if I hold my charcoal like I would a pen, this is really good for detail, but as you can see it also leaves a fairly dark mark that's hard to erase. It's so really nice for later on, but for now I want to keep things very light. So I hold it at the end and try not to use my wrist when I'm drawing. Now in this pose I'll be using comparative measurements. And what this means is that I'll be comparing, for instance in this case, the width of our cheekbone all the way to the back of our head to the length and I can do this on the photograph and then compare it in the same way on my drawing. So in this case I can see the bottom of the chin to the top of the head is roughly the same as the width of our head including the hair. I'm just adding a little bit more space for the bottom of the chin there. Now naturally we would be using lines to measure, but I actually also like using tones. So instead of outlining these measurements of the head, I'm just going to go ahead and use the side of an old piece of charcoal, a bit of charcoal dust, to just fill this whole shape in. Now this may produce some texture, so feel free to use a blending tool or a bit of tissue to just knock this back a touch. But the idea behind it is that we'll be looking at the shape of tones rather than the shape of outlines. Thank you. 
And this is actually something that the Impressionists found out. That what we really see is mostly just shapes of different colors and tones on our retina. I and mean, if we can replicate these shapes, we will replicate the object that we see in front of us. So the first thing we're going to do is try and outline the shape of the head and the shoulders onto the paper. And I'm just going to give this a single lightish tone. Again, feel free to blend this together if you feel like it has a bit too much texture, you're using quite textured paper, using any blending tool that you like, in this case I'm using a bit of kitchen roll. And once I've done this, I'm going to start measuring using that comparative measurement on top. So of course there's lots of different things to measure, but I'm going to take you through some of the standard measurements that I use in a portrait. And the first is always finding the midline of the face, which is usually the corners of the eyes. So I can use my comparative measurement for this, checking it first on the actual photograph and then checking it again on my drawing to make sure that it's both halfway. If you see it slightly different, then of course draw it slightly different as well. So if you see it a little bit higher than the mid line, then of course draw it a little bit higher. Now the next thing I'm going to do is look for the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. It should normally be equal to the bottom of the nose to the start of the brows and the brows to the top of the forehead. Now keep in mind that these measurements are standardized measurements and of course every individual is a little bit different. So again, if you see it slightly different, then of course copy that onto your drawing as well. Another measurement I find really useful is finding the center line. And the center line goes all the way from the middle of the forehead down the middle of the nose to the middle of the chin. And of course, if somebody is turned away, like we see in this portrait, the center line is not going to be in the middle, but it's going to be closer to the side of the face. Then using my comparative measurement, I can see how many times this fits into the width of the head and I can see in my case I just need to move it a little bit to the right. So now I've been using lines to make my measurements. I want to switch back to tones in order to make the shapes that of course make up those tones and the impressionists found out about. Now a good example is the shadow shape underneath her chin. We can see that's more or less a triangular shape. And one thing that's really good about this method is that it's very hard to draw a portrait, but most people will find it fairly easy to draw a triangle. So I'm just going to fill this in with a slightly darker tone there. And I can start looking at other places where I may see triangles. And I can see a really clear one, the light shape of her cheekbone on the far hand side. And I'm using my lines for the measurements here to help me figure out the shape of this triangle. 
for instance using the center line to see where it would connect with the nose. And then once I'm fairly happy with this, I can start drawing and adding in the darker tones around that triangle. Same thing for the bottom of the nose. We can see the nose itself is a light shape. And there's also a shadow underneath the nose there. And so this way I just sort of puzzle all of the shapes of the face until I feel like everything is roughly in the right place. Now this may seem very simplistic at first, and may also seem like the drawing is never going to come together. But just keep adding all of the different shapes, squares and triangles, trying to fit them all in the place that they belong to. And you'll see a face will start to form. Now if I'm having trouble with figuring out the angle of a certain line, for instance, the angle of the forehead here, I can see it's not going straight up, but it's angling back. And what I do with this is imagine a clock and see in which direction, which number the angle is going to. So in this case, I can see it's 1 o'clock, maybe 1.30. So I'm just going to spend a few moments measuring using the comparative measurements and measuring using the clock method to find my angles. And while I'm filling in all the dark shapes in the hair, if you have any questions at all, Feel free to let me know here in the comments if you're watching this live and otherwise I will speak to you in a few moments. So now I've got most of my dark shapes in, I'm going to start looking for some structural elements, for instance the eye socket. Now it can be kind of tricky to find the eye and the eye sockets, and the tendency may be to just outline the shape of the eye. But of course the eye sits in the bone of the eye socket, and so that's the first shape I'm going to find. And for this I can follow the darker shapes up the brow, along the brow, then dip it down again to the corner, the outer corner of the eye. This gives me the eye socket shape that is unique to her. And once I've got this I'm just going to give this a flat dark tone. And later I will refine this shape a bit more. But for now this is a fine placeholder. And I'm going to apply the same method to the lips as well. 
So there's lots of different tones there, I can see the teeth, stuff like that. But instead I'm going to just look at the darker tones of the top lip versus the lighter tones of the lower lip. Now what I tend to do is divide the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin into three equal parts. The first part will be taken up by the top lip. And we can see a little light triangle there. Going from the corner of the nose to the corner of the mouth. That can help me find the shape of that top lip. Then the second one third of that measurement is taken up by the light of the lower lip. And again, the tendency can be here to outline it, but instead try just drawing it by adding some darkness underneath. We can see a very clear shadow underneath the bottom of that lower lip. And by doing this again, we're giving the impression of the lips rather than outlining them. You can see the more shapes we add, the more we can start to see a face in these shapes. And this gives me what is called a fresh eye. I suddenly see my drawing in a different perspective. You can also induce this by using a mirror, flipping the image upside down or squinting with your eyes which makes you see only the big impression of the light and the dark tones. And using these ways to keep a fresh eye, I'm just going to adjust the shapes that I already made. So just pushing some inwards, pulling some other ones outwards, and just trying to generally get that puzzle piece of each shape in the right position. And again, while I'm doing this, feel free to ask me any questions in the comments if you're watching this live. Alright, so now I'm pretty happy with my bigger shapes. I'm now going to start breaking down these shapes into smaller tones. And for instance, a good example of this is the eye. So earlier I just drew the eye sockets, but now I can start looking at the smaller shapes within. For instance, I can clearly see a darker shape for the base of the brow, going down into the inner corner of the eye. Now 
Now, of course, both eyes are symmetrical, so feel free to reinstate that eye line. That should go from all of the corners of both eyes, so outer corner to inner corner. And this helps me with the measurements, and from there I can start breaking down that big eye socket shape into smaller dark shapes. First looking at the bigger shape of the brow, and then looking at the smaller shape of the eye, with a little dark shape near the outer corner there. And once I've got this, I can start adding in the darker shape of the iris. For the lower lid, again, it can be very tempting to keep a line there, but I tend to try and use tone instead. So instead of having an outline there, I'm just having a light shape underneath the iris. And by making this a little bit lighter, I'm indicating that bottom lid. You can see that even though I'm just using shapes here, it starts feeling a little bit like an eye. And for me, always the fun part is puzzling with these shapes, making small adjustments until I feel like the eye feels like her eye. So I'm just using the blending tools here to gently move these dark shapes around in order to get them in the right place. And these changes might be really, really small, just a few millimeters. And if you find that the paper is getting a bit muddy, your shapes are getting a little bit dark, harder to see. What I tend to use is a compressed charcoal pencil here to outline my shapes before pushing them around. And the great thing about the charcoal pencil is that it's a little bit darker and a little bit harder to erase. And what this means is that I can adjust the shape and then move it around without erasing the line that a charcoal pencil made earlier. And you may find that when drawing these shapes, that some parts of the shapes are easier to see than others. For instance, looking at the fold of the neck there, we can see a very clear line near the highlight in the neck. But on the other side of that dark shape, it's not as clear where the shape stops. It's more of a big gradation. And this is actually somewhere where the compressed charcoal can be really useful for the end that's nice and clear. And on the other hand, I'm going to start looking at this big gradation of the shape into the light. And for this I'll be using a blending tool. Now because the compressed charcoal is a bit harder to erase, I'm using the willow for the softer areas of the shape and I'm just adding them in 
and I'm going over these shapes with my blending tool in order to soften them into the light. And the softer I can make this, the more it feels like the shape slowly turns under. And a good rule of thumb is to have one sharp edge to each shape and one soft edge to each shape. For instance, looking at the chin here, we can see the outline is really nice and crisp. And this means that I can soften the other side of that shape. Same thing for the bottom of the nose. I can see some really clear outlined shapes there in the shadow below the bottom of the nose. And this means I can soften the top of that shape where it meets the tip of the nose. And so as you can see, I'm first outlining the shape and then softening some parts and leaving some other parts nice and sharp. And because the compressed charcoal is a bit harder to erase, I first tend to use the willow to sketch out where I want my lines and then use the compressed charcoal once a bit more sure about where I want to put them. And again, then softening over these shapes where I can see they are a bit softer than the crisp outline near the bottom of the nose. So I'm just going to go around the mouth here, looking at the smaller shapes, the smaller outlines of my shadow shapes. And again, treating it as small puzzle pieces. And then finally softening some of these shapes into the lights. And keeping others nice and sharp to get that variety in the edge. And note that I'm not really working inside of any of the shapes. I'm not working inside the lights or inside the shadows. I'm just working at the boundary between the two tones. Because this is where most of the turn happens and where most of the information is that gives us the impression of the portrait. So that's very useful, especially with a pose where we have limited time like this. We really want to make sure that we only draw the bits that are really going to make a difference and leave the bits that aren't going to make that much of a difference. So small changes in the shadows or small changes in the light are not that important right now. So 
So I've already practiced a bit on the lips and I've already got a rough outline for the eye. And now I'm going to go in with my compressed charcoal and really commit to some of these shapes. And I'm constantly adjusting what I did earlier here. Just making these small millimeter changes. And once I'm happy with these shapes, again, I'm going to make sure to soften them and keep them sharp in other areas. And the more I can push the softness, Versus the hard edges, the more the drawing will look interesting and alive. Because in real life, of course, there are corners that are really sharp. And there's areas that are really soft. For instance, the hair into the brow doesn't suddenly start. It slowly gradates out of the skin. And so the more I can push the difference between these two, the more real my drawing will start to look. And as a final touch, I may use my putty rubber to just add a few highlights where I can really see them jump out. For instance, near the bottom lid there. And that just gives a little bit of interest to that eye. Now same thing for the other eye, but this is a little bit more tricky because it's a three quarter view, so we see a lot less of that outer eye. And it also needs to be symmetrical with the other eye, otherwise she's going to start looking a little bit funny. So I'm using my other eye to measure up where the top and bottom lid should be, as well as the brow. And then I'm going to go ahead and start looking for the main darker shapes. So the dark shape of the brow versus the dark shape of the iris and the top lid. Now keep in mind that because this eye is turning away from us, it's not going to be quite as wide as the other eye. It's actually in perspective. And so this means that we're not going to see just as much of the white of the eye. Now 
And once again, once I'm happy with this, I can start softening all of these shapes into each other. And the more I can soften this, the more realistic it will start to feel. And then of course as a final touch, adding in maybe one or two light shapes there. But keep in mind that since this eye is turning away, it's not going to be quite as bright as the highlights in the other eye. So as you can see, it's all just shapes. First, I'm looking for my dark versus light shapes. Then I'm softening and adding highlights. And this principle can be applied to whatever you're going to be drawing landscapes, still lifes, painting or drawings. It always comes back to these dark and light shapes. Now portrait is actually very hard because the shapes in the eye, the nose and so on, if they change by a few millimeters, the drawing can already look off. So don't worry if you're not completely happy with your shapes, we can always push those around a bit more. But for now, let's switch to a different part of the head and this is the hair. Now the hair is actually really fun, to me at least, because you don't have to be quite as precise. You can just be a little bit more loose with the outline of the dark shapes. The only thing I'm really keeping in mind is the shape of our skull and the measurements that I made at the beginning of the video. But I'm just outlining the rough areas of her hair for now. And then I can use the same techniques that I used earlier. So her hair is actually a bit darker than the shadows of her face, so I'm just adding a little bit of willow charcoal there to darken it. And then I'm going to soften it, as well as adding in the highlights. Now for the highlights I'm just using my putty rubber. And I'm just dragging it in to the hairline from the light shape of the forehead. And as you can see, I'm using one large shape for this rather than having lots of little shapes. And this is a nice drawing trick that helps make the light feel stronger. Lots of little shapes don't have quite the impact that one big shape has. So I tend to always go for one large complicated shape over lots of little bitty shapes. So right now I've got most of my shapes in, I've got the hair in, I'm pretty happy with the anatomy of the face, and now I can start working on focus. And this is actually quite a personal thing, and different for each artist, but what I tend to do is start looking at where I want the viewer to look, 
and add a little bit more detail there and actually leave detail out in the areas that I don't want the viewer to look. For instance, here on the mouth, I'm just adding a few lines to give a bit of interest there. But because that's not the main area that I want the viewer to look, I'm also going to soften these in quite a bit. Because in my portrait, I want the viewer to first look at the eyes, and so they should have the most detail. And the nose and the mouth can be a secondary focal point. So in order to give the eyes the most detail, I'm going to go ahead and add some smaller highlights there. Maybe a little glimmer in the iris and the white of the eye. Just to give it a bit more focus and a bit more interest. Another thing that will bring out the focus is dark and light shapes combined, so a lot of contrast. So I'm going to also use my compressed charcoal to, in order to increase the light dark contrast in the eye, again to give it more focus. On the other hand, the area of the cheek, for instance, doesn't need to be quite as bright because I don't want the viewer to look at that area. So I'm just giving it a light wash of charcoal and knocking that tone back a little bit in order to give it a little bit less focus for the viewer. Now of course there are highlights on the cheek and so I will put these in using the rubber but then I'm going to really blend them in, keep them really nice and soft in order to shift that focus away from the cheekbone and towards the eye. But again, this is a very personal part of the drawing. Most of the hard work has been done. And now we can really start interpreting and starting to lead the viewer's eye. So you may not find that 
you want the viewer to look at the eye, for instance, you may want them to look at the nose or the mouth. In which case, the same techniques apply, but just start increasing the contrast in the areas where you want the viewer to look. So I've worked on my primary focus quite a bit, so the eye, and my secondary focus is the lips and the nose. And I'm just adding a few more shapes there, around the corner of the mouth and the corner of the nose, but keeping them fairly soft in order to decrease the focus, but still have a bit of interest there. So as you can see, this is the part of the drawing where it really starts slowing down. I'm really making some really minute changes here, just pushing some of the shapes a bit darker, softening other bits, but all with the same goal in mind of making the viewer look where I want them to look and recede some areas visually where I don't want the viewer to look. I'm also adding in just a little bit of a highlight, just the one each for the nose and the lips. So there is a little bit of interest there again, but not quite as much as the eyes. Alright, so we're nearing the end of the pose, so I'm just going to continue trying to create more of a focal point in the eye and knocking back other areas of the face. And while I'm doing this, if you have any questions at all, feel free to let me know here in the comments if you're watching this live.
All right, so that's the end of the pose for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope that you've enjoyed learning about lines versus tones. Now, if you'd like to show us your work, feel free to use the photograph button here in the chat. Or otherwise, use the hashtag, hashtag Raw Umber Live if you use Instagram. Finally, if you've enjoyed this video and would like to learn more about portraits and figure drawing, we do two classes a week online, so please consider subscribing. I hope you enjoyed the session and thank you for taking part. Don't forget to post your works onto Instagram and hashtag them with hashtag Raw Umber Live. We run two sessions a week, a figure drawing session every Wednesday at 8pm and portrait drawing every Sunday at 4pm. The last portrait session of every month is free. Thank you and goodbye.